Tournament, tournament, charge for rhyme. Greedy comics, Twister, Hell of Six, Hell of Wacky Nick, Take a Bad Hits, Take a Bad Hits, Start a Miss. What's up you guys, Shardimus Prime here, doing another NECA Toys action figure review on the 1990 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie, Walmart exclusive Casey Jones and Raphael in disguise 2-pack. If you're trying to get your NECA figures, you can do so at the Marvelous City, of, City of, collectibles. of Collectibles, where you can pick up your Marvel Legends and all kinds of other action figures. They have their daily deals and an awesome rewards points program, so check them out, link in the description below. And while you're down there, don't forget to reach over and tickle that like button and hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell and a big thank you to NECA Toys for making this review possible and sending out this review sample my way to review for you guys and I just gotta say I do feel very very fortunate to have this in hand right now so yes thank you again NECA for making this possible thank you viewers for also making it possible or else that stuff wouldn't happen anyway on the side right here Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles you can see some nice product shots of Casey Jones and then on the back you can see some awesome product shots right over here on this side you can see there's a read up if you want to read it go ahead and pause it right now and then over here, you can see some product shots of Raph in disguise. And then on the top right there, you get Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And then on the very bottom, you can see all the people responsible for creating these figures. All right, let's get to it and crack these things open. <laughs> So quickly, looking at Raph first, we have the three sets of hands, open, weapon holding, and finger out pointing. We have the two sides. A very cool thing about this figure is that you will find uh, one side missing in the tray. And I was confused for a second, and I actually said it in my head, but not out loud. I lost a side? And I looked through the box, and it was inside the box. And I was like, oh, that's great! Ah, I lost a side! So I thought that was great. Good job, NECA. I loved that. Thank you. I geeked out. That was fun anyway we get the three bandanas over there and then you can see that this one right over here is the one that comes on raft and it's the hardest one to port back inside the figure so that's the only tricky thing but yeah i do like having the option for all these three bandanas uh, this one right over here sticks out a little bit more nice paint apps right over there and then this one goes off to the side and then you have the slice of pizza right over here which always looks good NECA knows their pizza and the sides are all painted out very well and have great detail painted on the hands uh, they all hinge up and down <laughs> And I didn't want to forget the hat too, which looks pretty good, you know, it's made out of a soft rubbery material, it's painted very well. I do like it. It does have a little cut in the back. You can see that hole right over there. You can see how that kind of helps putting the hat on, which is a little tricky to have stay on there, but, you know, it's not too bad, really. And if you're curious if it would fit on a Ben Grimm figure, well, it does, so that's kind of cool. I do like that. Eh, yeah, but yeah, the coat's no way coming off of this thing and fitting on this figure. Like, it's just never going to happen, dude, like the sleeves and everything. But yeah, looking at the trench coat, I really like it a lot. Nice looking buttons right here. Great looking soft goods. It has the belt coming through right over there, so I do really dig it. I love the backpack. The backpack sculpted out very well. I like that. You know, shift it down, contours to the shell, which is great. And I'm not going to go over the articulation. You know, it's the same as you know as what you'd expect from having the figure clothed. You know, so you can twist things around and everything. Oh yeah, there was a flap right over here that was very irritating. And I've seen this in other people's pictures too. This little piece right here just didn't seem to get you know sewn all the way. I just used a little bit of sticky tack to get that to stick together right there. So, you know, that helps. And then we get all these accessories right over here for KC Jones. We get four pairs of hands. You get fisted hands, a wider holding weapon hands, and then smaller holding weapon hands. So these are the smaller ones. That's large. And then we get this one right over here. I really like the texturing on the gloves. And then for the left side, you can see that it's just a relaxed hand or, you know, I think this is for uh, the hockey stick holding hand, right? I think so. Uh, but anyway, yeah, here's looking at the nine iron. I don't know. But yeah, I remember it had a one. I think this is what he used um, uh, when he was in Splinter's lair, but yeah, I did heat this up to try to straighten it out, and this just swung back, and it took a lot to kind of straighten it out over here, so be careful heating this up if you're going to try to straighten this out. I know what a crumpet is if you go play cricket, but yeah, cricket bat looks pretty good. I like that. Nice wood grain sculpted in there, and then you have your two-for-one sale with the baseball bats, the Jose Canseco bats, which is really funny for me because um yeah when we were kids you know um i liked the giants and my brother liked the a's and i thought it was just so awesome to see that in the movie i was like oh yeah screw jose canseco but anyway yeah that looks cool 
Even though I don't really, you know, care about that stuff much now. You know, so when they trade players like crazy, man, and that's when I got out of, you know, watching baseball when I was a kid. I was like, oh, man, you ruined my team. You broke everything up. And it's just about the money. Yeah, damn. But anyway, yeah, looking at this right over here, it looks pretty good. I like how it's all worn on the hockey stick. Then I guess it's like a hockey goalie stick, right? Is that right? That's what I think it is. I don't know. Someone's going to let me know in the comment section below if I'm wrong about that. But this looks dope as well. And then you have the golf club bag right here looking awesome. So, yeah, this goes around the figure very easily. I would, I don't know, I don't feel like this is going to break on me. But if I'm, you know, not careful with it, it's kind of thin right over here. So I feel like it could break if you're not being careful. And then just getting this on Casey Jones and weaving this around like so. Pretty good, right? Yeah, I like that. And you can't fit everything in here, but oh, let's see. I'm trying to get all the stuff inside right here. And uh, kind of, yeah, you can get everything kind of in there. Maybe put one of these baseball bats facing the other direction. There, that works. Yeah, I don't think his bag was fully loaded quite like this in the movie, but hey, it's still kind of neat looking, right? And he can still do it, so that's cool. And what the hell is that sound? <laughs> so it would have been great for us to get an Elias head sculpt. I keep wanting to say Elias, but yeah, it's uh, a little unfortunate that we don't get the Elias head sculpt with this one, but hey, it gives people a chance to buy another Casey Jones later on, right? I I'm sure that's going to happen. But this mask looks really good. I really like how the band looks coming across right over here that strap anyway that is sick nice paint detail on everything the vest looks dope again there's like this subtle texturing right here on the mask that just adds another depth to it you know layer of depth anyway i just like that a lot and then you get the denim vest right over here looks really good uh this is the only really weird part for me uh, with the figure are these elbow joints they, they it's like they never look great but at the same time they never look bad enough to seriously bother me and i love having the articulation so i think these could have been done a little better but at the same time i'm i don't know i would rather have this here like this than have a single joint like that you know what i mean that, that that's all i have to say so as someone who loves double jointed elbows i i just feel like i don't have a whole lot of room to complain about this so much you know what i mean i'm, I'm happy that they're there at least and then the shirt looks really good and then the <laughs> can't believe he's got the sweats on right here. I always thought that was funny. And then, yeah, I like how we got some nice dirt on them and everything like that. Wow, those 80s sweats. And then looking at the shoes right here, looking pretty good, man. And it looks like he had Velcro, right? Is that Velcro? I don't know. But anyway, looking at the bottom of the feet, you do have peg holes. So I recommend heating up your figure with a hair dryer. You want to do that, you know, loosen up the joints before breaking it up and getting it into poses and everything. But anyway, I don't get a whole lot of head movement over here, especially with the long hair. So he could barely move up and his head does look a whole lot more downward and you get side to side motion and some head pivoting right over here. Shoulders move outward uh, that far and down. You could rotate forward and rotate back you can do a full 360 actually uh, you get rotation at the elbow and then the double jointed elbows once again and then all the wrist turns side to side and hinge up and down and then you do get a waist joint right here and then he'll crunch for it i can feel a diaphragm joint actually on the inside right over there so uh, with everything all together you'll move forward that much and back that far and then you get some pivoting right here especially at the waist and of course it'll turn side to side hips move outward just that far and then i like how the crotch area is made out of a softer material so you can get him kicking forward quite a bit and he'll kick back very far upper thigh cut up there and then you have a 90 degree bend at the knee and you can rotate the knee the ankle articulation is a bit stiff you can turn side to side will hinge down just a little bit and it will hinge up some and you do get a little itty bitty uh, barely any ankle pivot but it's kind of there it's like the ankle articulation meets inside the shoe so that's why it's so restricted and then the hinges are coming up above the shoe so that's why you get more forward and back movement right there now to measure out these two figures you could see that Raphael is standing at about six and a half to seven inches tall closer to six and a half inches and then Casey Jones is standing closer to just a little over seven inches tall I thought they were a little closer in height in the movie no weren't the turtles a little on the larger side I don't know remind me in the comment section and then here's Casey Jones Jones and Raphael next to the Raphael from the SDCC exclusive box set. And yeah, again, I mean, it's the same figure right over here. I guess the paint is just slightly different on this one. I guess that would make sense. But yeah, a little bit more browns, I think, on this one compared to that one. Then here's Casey Jones and Raph in disguise. Amongst the other SDCC exclusive turtles, we have Leo, Mikey, and Donatello. And then here's Casey Jones and Raph in disguise. Next to last year's SDCC exclusives, we have 
Shredder and Foot Soldier. I just wanted to show the Casey Jones next to two other human characters. So, yeah, just so you could see that. And by the way, uh, my favorite line from the movie was, whoops. But, yeah, I guess Casey Jones is just a little on the tall side, right? I don't remember him necessarily being that much taller than Shredder. And then just for fun, here's the two figures next to the Loot Crate exclusive Astral Form Master Splinter. Then here's Raph in disguise and Casey Jones next to your average six-inch scale figure. We have the Marvel Legends Big Time Badass Spider-Man. The <laughs> inner city pervert and Jason Voorhees. I'm getting out of here! <laughs> So I hope you guys enjoyed my video. If you did, please hit that like button and hit the subscribe button as well as a notification bell. We gotta hit that one million subscriber. And then if you guys want to support this channel, you can do so at the crowdfunding link below. Thank you to all these people over here that participate in the exclusive bonus footage and all the goodies over there. These two figures are awesome. I really like them a lot, man. I'm just really happy that we have this two-pack set. Now, yeah, mostly we did see Casey Jones unmasked, so eventually uh, we can get that other head sculpt that would be sweet but at the same time the mask is so iconic along with all the weapons and everything it's still a really badass figure and i'm just really happy to have the casey jones raff in disguise that's another one you want in your collection so i'm really happy to have both of these and at the price point of around 50 bucks i'm gonna give this two-pack set a sun rating of <laughs> yes! oh my god I'd like to know what you guys think. I'm pretty sure I know what you guys think. Everyone's pretty much like just thrilled about these. It's just an awesome two pack set, I think, anyway. But you know, reassure me, let me know. Maybe you might have some gripes that I haven't heard about it. You know what I mean? Anyway, let me know in the comment section below. And you can see the latest in your action figure news over at toynewsi.com. And don't forget to follow me over on Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, and Stardust. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace. Hey, new Shark Miss Prime videos. Hey, you should click one. Yeah, click on one of them. Or subscribe if you haven't.